Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for part four of our longitude tutorial series coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's episode, we'll be covering the final phase of flight, the arrival, approach, and landing. Just like in previous episodes, we will also be using a couple mods. One can be found in the marketplace labeled Longitude Enhancement Mod. The second one can be found over at flightsim.to labeled FDE Fix Mod. Links will also be down in the description for that. Once you install this mod, make sure you go to your livery section and verify you're using the correct livery with the mod and the version number. Lastly, I just have one disclaimer. I am not a pilot so I will not be going over any procedures throughout the duration of this series. The aim of this series is to better help you understand the systems and the avionics inside the Cessna Citation Longitude. If you have any comments or questions along the way today, please post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Welcome back. Before we jump into today's episode, there is one thing that I need to go over that I should have went over in episode number three. And that's going to be how to automatically calculate our V speeds. Now I know I went over the chart to show you how to manually input all of your V speeds, but the G5000 will do this for us. So let me take you down to the G5000 and show you how we're going to do that. During the cockpit preparation phase, under the performance tab here, we went over all of these tabs kind of from the top down. But in actuality, the way you really want to do this is to set your fuel and weight first. Once you have all of the fuel and weight information set, then if we go up to the takeoff data, once we start entering all of our information over here in these tabs on the left, the takeoff data tab will appear and we can click on that at the bottom. From here, we can click on accept takeoff speeds and then it will input all of these V speeds into our G5000 for us and we don't have to manually calculate those. But I guess it's good that you know how to manually calculate all of your V speeds, so now you know both ways. We're also going to use this method on our landing data. We're just going to click here and go through all of this information. Now again, you'll see that the landing data tab is not highlighted for us to click on and that's because we need to enter all of this information at the top first. We'll get into that in just a little bit. All right, so we are now in our cruise phase of flight at 45,000 feet. Our top of descent is gonna be right around 12 minutes. So before we get there, I would like to go over an arrival briefing and also to show you just one little tip for the G5000. For today's charts, I will be using Navigraph to display them, but for all of those who do not have Navigraph, down in the description, I will have links to all of the free charts from Skyvector, so you can see exactly all the same information we're gonna go over here. So if we zoom in on the arrival chart, we are gonna be entering this arrival on the Shiner Waypoint. At this waypoint, we need to be between 19,000 and 16,000 feet. Now, one thing to take notice of here, before the Shiner waypoint at Haney, we have a speed restriction of 280 knots. Our next speed restriction at 250 knots is at the QUBEN waypoint. So what I wanna do is to make sure that we have a 280 knot speed restriction for the Shiner waypoint. Now, I'm not sure if this is mandatory, but I can only assume that if they want us to enter at 280 knots here, that this entire leg is probably a 280 knot speed restriction. If I'm wrong, please let me know down below in the comments section. So let's go ahead and take care of that first in the G5000. If we go down to our flight plan, and we're gonna go down to the Shiner Waypoint, and as you can see, we have no speed restriction here. So all we need to do is a left click here. We're gonna enter a speed restriction of 280 knots at 280 and hit enter. I hope that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please let me know down below. So now let's scroll up on the arrival chart all the way up till we're gonna be exiting the arrival at the Clark waypoint. 
Now, I also went over this, I believe, in episode number two. Maybe it was three. And I went over how to deal with the Mansec portion of your flight plan. During this approach, we will be utilizing our heading hold mode to get us lined up on the approach course first before we activate our localizer. Now the reason for that is, if we take a look at the runway here, we're going to be coming in on runway 26, and the initial approach fix is going to be somewhere just north of the Clark waypoint. The problem here is, both waypoints are so close to each other that if I went direct from Clark to the initial approach fix, I will not be able to get the plane lined up on the approach course fast enough to then be able to activate the localizer and we're probably going to be picking up the glide slope shortly after that. Now as you know in my previous episodes you do not want to activate approach mode until you are lined up on the localizer first. So what we're going to be doing is activating heading hold mode from Clark to then vector ourselves out over the ocean making a left hand turn to then line us up on the approach course and then activate the localizer at that point. Alright, so taking a look at the approach plate, at the very top we have our localizer frequency of 110.3. We can see our inbound course of being 257 into the runway and our outbound course down here at 076. This is not going to be the exact reciprocal of 257 degrees as if you take a look above in the holding pattern, the inbound course to this is 256. So let me go over a very quick and easy way for you to figure out any reverse course to any inbound course or heading. We'll use today's approach as an example. So what we would want to do is to add 180 degrees to any inbound course or heading. So we would take 257 and add 180 degrees. Now that's going to equal 437 degrees. Now we all know that a circle is only comprised of 360 degrees, so because we exceeded that 360 degree threshold, we will then subtract 360 degrees from 437. That leaves us with 77 degrees. That's going to be our reverse course to our inbound heading of 257. So now let's do this one more time with, let's say, a 30 degree inbound course. If we add 180 degrees to 30 degrees, we get 210 degrees. So that will be our reverse course to 30 degrees. So I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions about that, please let me know down below in the comments. It looks like we have just about one minute to our top of descent here. So what I want to do is set up our altitude to our lowest flight restriction on our arrival. The lowest flight restriction altitude on the arrival is 4,000 feet. So we're just going to go ahead and set our altitude for 4,000 feet. All right, so now that we're set at 4,000 feet, we also need to activate our VNAV, so we'll just go ahead and tap that. And as you can see, we already have the glide slope has popped up here on the left. and our vertical speed indicator with the magenta arrow on the right hand side. This should follow our V path quite nicely so I can finish talking about the arrival. The next thing I want to take a look at is our altitude restriction at our initial approach fix, the TIKRY waypoint. If we take a look down at the profile view of the approach, you can see that we need to be at 2,000 feet. Now we are going to be exiting our arrival at 4,000 feet. So that means we need to descend 2,000 feet before we even get to our initial approach fix. This is going to be another reason why we need to activate heading hold and vector ourselves out over the ocean to give us a little bit more time so that we can descend. Our final approach fix is going to be at the DLTN waypoint and we need to make sure that we are at 1,600 feet so that we can properly capture the glide slope for our landing. The last thing I want to take a look at here, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, is going to be our minimums for our landing, and that's going to be right at 200 feet AGL. Now, I went over this in a previous episode also about how to read these charts, 
I'll post links down below in the description for that as well. Now please don't hate on the video too bad, it is an older video, but I do have a lot of good information here about how to read these approach charts. One other thing that I did forget to mention about the arrival that we're going to be on today, this is an RNAV arrival, so if you are doing an ILS, you probably wouldn't be using this arrival. I know people are going to call me out in the comments. Okay, that's it. You got some nerve. But I'm only using this for training purposes. All right, so that was the arrival and approach briefing. I'll bring everyone back once we get a little bit lower, and I'll show you how we are going to manipulate the autopilot so that we can get us lined up on the approach and localizer course. Until then, a little word from our sponsor. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Navigraph. Get all of your flight planning, charts, and weather in one easy to use application. VR users take advantage of the InSim toolbar menu for seamless VR integration. Update all of your third party aircraft as well as Microsoft Flight Simulator to the current AirAct cycles. Pick up yours today at Navigraph.com. Links down in the description. Navigraph charts intended for flight simulation only, not for navigational use. All right, so we are just about down to 20,000 feet. So I would like to go over the performance data for our landing. If we head down to the G5000 and we go to the performance tab over on landing data, now we can start entering some of our landing information. For our landing weather, we can either use current or predicted. I'll just use predicted. We want to make sure that we have the correct runway and the correct airport above. We'll go down to the weather tab. We're going to load the METAR data that will fill all of this information for us. We can also show the METAR data if we'd like to do that as well. From here, I also want to take notice of the barometric pressure. Now, usually once you get down to below 18,000 feet, ATC will give you your barometric pressure to enter. 358 Mike Hotel, Daytona Approach, altimeter 3004. Uh, wind 2807, would you like 25 right or 34? Now, because we're not using ATC for today's flight, I'm just going to enter 3015 into our altimeter now. And there we go. Now our barometric is set up for the arrival airport. The next tab down on the left we have is the runway data. Another good piece of information here is the runway heading for the approach. Below that we have the landing configuration. We're just going to keep this as use defaults, but you do have the ability to go in here and change some of these. Not all of them, but some of them. At the very bottom you'll notice the landing data tab is now highlighted so we can click on that. And lo and behold, we have a nice little error that you're going to see on the screen. Now if we take a look at the Navigraph charts again, you'll see at Jacksonville on runway 26, we're going to have a tailwind of 12 knots, and that's because we're using live weather for today's flight. Now in a normal scenario, you would not want to fly on this runway because of that, but I want to keep the exact same flight plan for every episode, so that's what we're going to do for today. So on a normal flight, when you're not exceeding any wind limits, you will have the accept landing speeds button over here that you can click on, and that will automatically put in your approach speeds. But because we don't have that, I'm just going to use the approach speeds that we have here at the top, 113 and 104. Before we get any lower, I just want to verify that I have the correct nav frequency. Just head down to the G5000, click on radio, and make sure that we got the 110.3 in our nav frequency. Let's talk about a couple things before we get to the Clark waypoint, because things are going to go a little bit quickly once we get there. Once we arrive at the Clark waypoint, we know our initial approach fix altitude is 2,000 feet. So we'll need to set our altitude for 2,000 feet. I'm going to activate vertical speed probably at a 1,500 foot descent. And then we're also going to activate heading hold mode. And lastly, probably the most important is to deactivate your VNAV. If you do not deactivate the VNAV, it can cause you some issues on approach. So make sure that you do that. It looks like we got about three minutes, so we're not far off. Once we get just about to the Clark Waypoint, I'll bring everybody back and show you what we're going to do from there.
All right, so we're not far from the last waypoint in our arrival. A couple things I want to make sure that I have my nav one in my bearing. This way, if we have DME, it will show that on our PFD. And the next thing that we're going to do is to make sure that we have our heading set correctly at 076. And this is the parallel heading to our approach course at 257. One other thing that I like to do once we exit the Clark Waypoint is to turn our auto throttle into manual speed mode. Now this is going to enable us to control the speed a little bit better for when we are coming in on our approach. So to do that, at the very top here, you'll see the speed switch, and we're going to flip that from FMS to manual, and we can do that right now because 210 knots is the last speed restriction. So once we pass the Clark Waypoint, I will most likely bring our speed down a little bit more to around 180 knots. Again, I'm not sure if this is absolutely correct with procedure, but it's going to help us for when we make our turn into our approach course, and it will allow us to reduce our speed at a gradual pace instead of slamming on the speed brakes. All right, so we're just about at the Clark Waypoint. From here, we are going to activate heading hold. So at the very top, we're just going to click on the heading button. We are also going to deactivate our VNAV here, and we are going to reduce our altitude to 2,000 feet and now we need to tell the aircraft how to descend so we're going to hit vertical speed and we are going to adjust this down about 1500 feet per minute is good we're also going to turn the speed down now because we want to start lowering our speed for approach so I'm going to set this to about 180 knots Now if we take a look at our map here, you can see the TIKRY waypoint is just off to my left. So if we try to make this turn right now, it's going to be close to whether we're going to be able to get lined up on the approach course. So I'm just going to go out over the ocean a little bit more, also while we are descending to try to make sure that we're going to enter our initial approach fix at 2,000 feet. The next thing that we need to do is to turn our autopilot into nav one mode. Now, if you're not using this method and you are using autopilot all the way up till your approach, then the approach and the localizer should automatically switch for you so you don't have to manually do this. But because we are doing kind of a different approach here and we're not allowing the autopilot to take us in all the way, at least from the last arrival waypoint, we are going to have to activate that manually. All right, so I think we're out far enough over the ocean. We are going to go up to our heading and start turning the plane. Generally, what you'd like to do is to enter the course on about a 45 degree angle. Now what we want to do is to make sure the autopilot is going to pick up on the localizer course, so we're just going to tap the nav button. On the autopilot panel on the PFD, you will see that localizer is lit up in white and heading is still in green. That means the autopilot is following the heading bug for now until we get close enough to our localizer course, and then the autopilot will pick up the localizer, localizer will light up in green, and the heading hold will drop off. So we'll see how that's going to work here in just a second. The needle on the HSI should be moving any moment now, and as soon as it starts moving to the center just like it did, you can see localizer at the top has lit up in green. From this point, I'm going to lower our landing gear to get prepared for our landing, and add one notch of flaps. I probably should have already done that. And the one thing I like to use is the angle of attack indicator for entering my flaps. Now we do have a heck of a tailwind here, 
So this is going to be unlike any other landing you would normally do. Now, as you can see over here on the right hand side, we have the glide slope is populated and it is way at the very top. So that is perfect. You always want to come in under the glide slope because if you try to make your approach and you're above the glide slope, you will never capture it with the autopilot. You will have to take a nose dive down just to get the glide slope to line up and then the autopilot will catch it. Now you'll notice here that once I start decreasing the speed of the plane, if we take a look at the angle of attack indicator, it's going to start climbing. And that means your plane is going to have to start pitching more and more up just to stay in level flight. And once this needle starts getting up near to the yellow, that's a great indicator that you need to add some flaps or speed up so that you can maintain flight. So I'm gonna slow down just a little bit more and show you how that works. Now if you take a look at that needle, that needle is climbing, climbing, climbing. That means our aircraft from the outside is starting to really pitch up with the nose. Now if we add another notch of flap, now you can see the angle of attack has just come back down and we have leveled out. Now our glide slope is starting to come down, so we want to make sure that we go up and hit the approach button and you don't want to hit the approach button too early and the reason for that is sometimes if you hit the approach button too early the plane is going to then try to climb to capture the glide slope so I always like to wait until the diamond comes down probably right about here and here's when I would want to activate approach you normally wouldn't come in this slow this far out I'm only doing this to show you the angle of attack meter and to show you how that corresponds with when you want to add some flaps. All right, so we have now captured a glide slope. I'm going to increase our speed up a little bit to about 150 knots is good. Once we get down to about 500 feet off the ground, I'm going to deactivate the autopilot as well as the auto throttle, and we're gonna go in manually. Now, like I said, we've got a heck of a tailwind here, so this is really going to play with us uh, once we're coming in on landing. As you can see, the plane is having a really hard time trying to keep us in the air. All right, we're going to deactivate the autopilot, and we're going to deactivate auto throttle now. And we'll try to use the diamond on the glide slope to keep us lined up. And just be mindful of your speed. Now, we got a heck of a tailwind, so don't let the speed drop too low. Or you're going to drop right out of the sky. long. Hey, but that's okay. We made it down safe and sound. Boy, those reverse thrusters on this thing are killing. All right, everyone, that's going to finish us up for today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back to you. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.